everyone. Welcome to the last day of UXLX Masters. I hope you had a blast last few days. Today's program is no less exciting and we have a few more great master classes to go. So let's kick off today with Bill Scott. I started organizing international conferences about 15 years ago. And the very first speaker I picked up from the airport was Bill. He arrived on a Sunday and we immediately went to Sintra for a visit. I fondly remember eating freshly baked bread with chorizo on a tiny square uh, in the village. A few years later, he returned to UXLX with his wife and we've been friends since. Before the pandemic, Bill traveled all over the globe um, working for PayPal free and frequently, uh, and he, he recently discovered a love for coffee that threw him into an exciting journey of discovery. So let's go on with Bill on a pursuit of the perfect coffee. Uh, good morning, Bill. It's uh, 6 a.m. over there in San Francisco. It is. Nice it's time perfect. for a cup of coffee. Yeah, it's a perfect time for, for coffee. Uh, hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, what we're going to do is geek out a little bit. Um, I'll give you a quick story. Uh, I had moved to Manhattan because uh, I was uh, CTO of Venmo uh, at one point. And so at Venmo, we had a uh, cold brew uh, on tap. And I really hated coffee at that point. And my daughter really loved coffee. And I thought, man, if I could just love coffee, you know, they'd give me something cool to share with my daughter. So I thought, you know, I'll try cold brew. I never tried it before. So I, I poured a glass of it, text a picture of it to my daughter. And she texts back immediately, oh my God, dad, if you drink that, you'll die. Uh, too much caffeine. And I took took a drink. And I was like, ah, that's pretty good. And before I knew it, I was just really addicted to cold brew. And um, and then being in Manhattan, uh, of course, in the winter and stuff like that, before you knew it, I was uh, I was drinking espresso and began to love it. Bought a Breville uh, Oracle Touch machine at one point and uh, began to play with making and making espressos. And been talking about an incredibly frustrating experience trying to get uh, <laughs> a good cup of espresso. Uh, you know, I learned a lot, a lot of things along the way. Eventually, upgraded this machine. I'll show you here. Let me switch the camera. Uh, yep. Uh, too, too many switches, hold on here, there we go. Uh, this is the decent espresso machine. Uh, it's got an Android tablet that drives things. I'll zoom into it a little bit here. And um, it allows you to mimic pretty much any espresso machine. In fact, you can completely program it for pressure, volume, weight, um, temperature, uh, any, anything pretty much you want. And you've got real-time graphs. And, um, you know, and, and then you're able to make, make some actually some really beautiful espresso. But there are a lot of techniques, even with a machine like this, that I had learned on, on the other machine and uh, brought them over in here. And I'm going to spend some time showing that to you this morning as we make a lovely cup of Verb Sermon, uh, one of my go-tos. And then uh, I'm going to, I'll let my scale, the scale actually this morning, uh, low battery as soon as I turn it on, but I'm charging it. So I want to introduce some of the equipment to you. And then uh, we will, let's see here. Okay, so in a, in a bit here, we're gonna make, make a cup. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grind it. We're gonna grind our beans. And I pre-weigh all the beans out of these little bean cellars. I actually have a, a container, that, a wooden container handmade in Israel. Uh, and I put these in and they have a one-way valve on it, you know, so the gas can escape and you can see that Beans are in there, they're pre-weighed, so it saves some time. This is the Niche Zero, which um, is a really fantastic grinder, single dose grinder. Um, what I love about it is that, well, with a Zero, it's basically there's there's no uh, retention. It's actually 0.1 grams of retention. Now, uh, because we're such geeks in this sort of thing, uh, we, we have, I have bought this little uh, diaphragm uh, I think it's for babies this, when you pull this sputum out. <laughs> but it's a diaphragm that allows you to push that and push the last little 0.1 gram out. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. And then before I grind this, though, I'm going to show you some of the tools I have. Um, once I grind this, um, I'm going to put this into see that let me put that here there we go i'll have my holder there my tamper okay and then um 
these tools here, this is a, that's called a WD tool, which is a wise, guy's name is wise, distribution technique. And what I'll end up doing is with this sleeve, I'll pour the grinds in and I'll fluff it to get any air compaction out, just get it even, then do a little smoothing. Now this little tool here is actually a keyboard cap puller, just like you do on your keyboard, right? With the ends clipped off. So kind of, again, geeking out there a little bit. And then uh, once, once I do that, I'll do a tamp and then take this sleeve off and I'll do a level. And that's just a leveler that actually takes the grinds, smooths it out. And the reason of that step is that makes it really easy just to lay the, the tamper in because it's flat and level. And then you do the pressure and this has a, a 30 pound release. So we'll go over that. All right, so we'll do that. Now I'm gonna go grab my scale because uh, the battery was low this morning and I had to charge it. So hopefully it's got enough juice to do its job. Now this this machine also uh, Bluetooths to the to the uh, to the scale. I use the the Kaya lunar scale. I think you can let me switch back here real quick. There we go, the Kaya lunar scale, and um, and then what I do is I can I can uh, connect it up with here, and there's a screen that allows me to do the binding. Here we go. And uh, I'm going to show you just real quick, zoom this in so you can see Get that there. Very good. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, there we go. Just for a minute there. Let's do that. Make sure. Okay, cool. So you can see that um, with this, this one, that the top is the pressure. And so this program here is called Sweet and Gentle, Gentle and Sweet. And it starts you know, at zero bars of pressure. It goes up to about four bars of pressure at 20 seconds and does a rise to six bars of pressure and then drops off um, down to, uh, well, it'll stop either at 60 or 70 seconds, or in my case, I actually have it set so that the weight is being watched and once it gets to 32 grams in the cup it'll stop it's set to 199 degrees um, so i think we're with all that introduction maybe we're ready to actually make some coffee let me back this back up so we can get a good view what's going on here now a lot of work goes into actually getting espresso ready because i mean espresso dialed in so what I would normally do is take a new set of beans. I would grind them on this niche the, with the calibration I have. It's usually around 19 or 20. If it's a, a more of a uh, medium to light roast, you know, I'll go a little, uh, I may go a little coarser. Uh, with a dark roast, I may go a little finer. Um, and then I'll, you know, make it and I'll, I'll see if it hits my recipe or not. And my recipe that I use is about 20 grams in the in the actual uh, grinder, and some people use 18, but I, st I stuck on 20 and just kind of have stayed there. So 20 grams in here, um, and then go for about 30, 32 seconds. Go to 32 grams, and that's pretty much a good a good target. If it runs too fast, then I know that I'm I'm too coarse. If it runs too slow, then I know I'm too too fine. But at the end of the day, you taste the cup and see how it does. Okay, let's go ahead and make this. Set this up. And I'll take the looking diaphragm and you may or may not be able to see it, but there's a little puff that happens a little bit more when the puff comes out. Leave on here, do a little dump. And maybe I can show this here. Uh -huh. Now with the little WDT tool, I'll do a little. Like 
this guy. Do a little just simple flatten. And uh, when I actually introduced this technique, it changed the consistency for sure on, on the grind because puck preparation is really important on espresso. Just a tap a couple of times and then do a level. Once you've done the level, it some people use these actually to tamp. They just uh, let this go down lo lower and do it. I found, found it didn't, it wasn't as consistent for me. So I use it just to level and then I do the actual tamp. And because it's level, I can just lay it like that. Push. And I've got here. Now what I'll do is grab that. And then I'm going to switch the camera to this view. Get this guy out of the way. Now you can see the cup, cup and hopefully if you watch uh, right along here, it's going to play a focus game here. I don't know. Of course, in all the testing, the focus worked perfect, right? <laughs> uh, I got this new camera yesterday, so it's it's uh, wanted to misbehave. It's probably, oh, there we go. Okay, so if you kind of look up under here, this is called a naked porta filter, and uh, the way that works is it doesn't have a, doesn't have spouts. It actually you'll see uh, you can actually see the pour, and and you can if if the pour comes together into a single uh, funnel at what, some point, you know you don't have channeling. If it sprays everywhere, then you know you got channeling, and you don't have the puck prepared correctly on your espresso. So I'm going to go ahead and. Get this started, make sure the scale is on and being extra careful here because we don't have that much time. So make sure get that started. And uh, you know, with espresso, it's very it's very finicky because of the pressure, the temperature, the time, and all that stuff. It's four hours are a lot easier in my mind. Okay, we're getting ready to get we're getting close to the pre-infusion step. And I could probably Yep, you can start seeing the pour coming. I'm gonna switch it real quick to here. If you can, if you can make it out, there's actually a, uh, there. a little, see, it should snap, there we go, that's good. It's counting to 32 grams. And then I'll show you this other screen here in a second. Let me do that. The camera. Okay, let's bring this here. This in. So I think you can see the three graphs. You've got, <clears throat> there was a, before it showed what the pressure should be like. Now, if I tap this, you can actually see what really happened in real time. So you can see the flow rate um, was at, at about four milliliters a second. And then the pressure is starting to build up. And at some point the pressure pushes and then the flow rate drops because it's going through that, it's, it's beginning to get work its way through the puck. And then the pressure goes back up. Uh, this, the brown, if you can see it, is the weight. And then this crazy line here is the puck resistance, which always looks a little bit wild. You probably can't see it. I'll, I'll share some pictures later. Um, all right, let's, let's, uh, switch back to here and the to watch the host sip a little espresso and tell you how amazing it is even if it's not that is good yeah this one um the verb sermon has a bit of a chocolatey a little bit of fruitiness but they call it blueberry pie and velvety now i'll confess to you I really can taste all the things, but I can taste some of them sometimes. Uh, my, my palate's probably not that re is refined. So that's a good cup. Okay. I was going to, you know, make a couple of cups, but I think I'll just do the one. It kind of gives you the idea of how this works. Um, we could, you know, let me do this. I'll flip real quick. If I can uh, take this guy. Maybe I'll just move him in a little closer, get a better view to show you this and then if we have time we'll do a pour over but there's a lot to 
discuss on this guy here. Get the focus right. There we go. Cool. Okay. So if you if I go back to here, I can hit presets. And if you can read that, there's uh, like Blooming Espresso, Classic Italian Espresso, uh, E61 Espresso Machine, Gentle and Sweet, Italian Espresso, all these different ones. And uh, what they do is mimic different ones. If you see the graph here, you can see the one I was using. It, it goes up to four bars, jumps to six, and then tapers back off to four. Um, I created a few different versions of this. And the only thing, this is at 199. The other one here is at 190. Um, and if you go to classic Italian espresso machine, what they do is they go uh, during pre-infusion for about eight seconds or so. They'll go up to about, you know, four bars and then jump to nine bars of pressure and then keep that constant. And a lot of times you're at a higher temperature around 201 degrees Fahrenheit, sorry for not being in Celsius uh, for those in other places. Um, but what's cool about this machine is, you know, even you can take something like the blooming espresso and what it does is it creates a flow rate based, goes to four milliliters a second, goes for 22 or 20, 23 seconds, drops down to no pressure at all. So it's just going to bloom. The water's going to sit in the puck and it's going to bloom the espresso, just like you'd bloom a pour. And then um, this continues out to about 50 something seconds and goes up to about two milliliters, three milliliters a second, and then goes and stops. And then there's a temperature change that happens, a higher temperature uh, when it's uh, blooming and then it drops a little bit. So the machine is really <laughs> a pretty incredible machine because, you know, I could go into any of these, for example, this one here, and you can see I can actually program uh, this. So it's a, it's, it's a complete, it's a complete, complete geek out machine without a doubt. Uh, in fact, I'll show you how versatile it is. I think what we'll do in just a few minutes we have is let's make some tea. So I'm going to make a black tea. I think you can see it says tea porter filter black tea. And if you look over here, you see how the spikes are. What's happening is it's going to infuse uh, for a bit, have a flow rate going, and then it's going to drop pretty much to nothing. And then it's going to stay that way till about 50 seconds out. Then it's going to do the same thing. So basically what you've got is you've got, you've got uh, infuse, hold that and steep, release, steep, release, steep, release, you know. Now the secret to that, secret sauce to the way that we get that to work is this little uh, device here. This is a T porta filter, the special made device that fits on the uh, espresso machine. A little wipe here. Just wipe that off. I don't need this. And what we're going to do is make some tea. So this um, will hold water. And this valve won't open unless there's at least four bars of pressure. So that's why this is programmed this way. Steep release, steep release. By pushing enough pressure, uh, it gets the, the water to come out. So we will we'll do that. I have uh, already have poured a tea or weighed out. And I like uh, this brand a lot from Sri Lanka. Pure Ceylon tea. And then let's see. I'm going to back this back up. Let's put this over here. Get a little funk in this. There we go. So what will happen is uh, we'll pour this in here. So the tea leaves are in there. And then I already did a white chip. That. Take a cup, which by the way, I'll show you the cool thing here. I have a lot of amazing mugs here that are fun with. It's part of the fun experience, right? So we will back this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now I lock this in, and then all it really comes down to now is uh, let's take this crazy cup here, slide in here, do that. And uh, yeah, so basically it's going to follow the program. And, uh, yeah, 
I'll start making the tea. And uh, I think we only have a couple minutes left. So I wanna, as you can see, it's just gonna do it. We'll probably get the first one to sort of get going here. Now, I also do pour overs every morning. In fact, uh, on our property, we have three acres and we have a house out back. My son, daughter-in-law and grandkids are there. And um, um, I make probably three or four batches of pour over. You can kind of see it in there. So it'll do that four times. So just now it's gonna steep again. And then it's going to do the release. So, but I don't really have time to do the four hours this morning. But I went through the same adventure of lots of experimentation and uh, had to develop a technique on that as well. And there's plenty of different ones. Uh, on espresso, just kind of summarize. You know, it really comes down to you got to you got to figure out what your dose is going to be coming in, what dose you want out, and kind of basically the time you want to go, and maybe how much weight. And you can let some of those things relax, and then experiment with getting a good cup. Um, that's, you know, it's like a continual pursuit to do that. Pop this back here. All right. Um, I think we have maybe three minutes. Not sure what else I can talk about. Bruno, I don't know if you want to uh, ask any questions or. Um, I had uh, I had some people asking the brand of the machine, but I shared with them. Uh, they asked if you can share the brands of the things that you've used here later yeah. on yeah I'd give the whole list yep i mean it's simple stuff even like even like you know just a a mat to tampons so you don't damage your counter yeah uh, a lot of options i also have an instagram account called the bathroom barista and uh you'll see everything on there it's called the bathroom barista because when i was doing this big remodel i i didn't have a place to put the uh, the coffee shop so i put it in the bathroom and uh <laughs> so <clears throat> you can read a little of that story on the bathroom barista.com but also instagram is where i kind of document my coffee journeys i've also started a, a food channel called uh, every dish i'll share that to you but uh, i'm starting to explore an outdoor kitchen because i have a, a large outdoor kitchen that has about six different appliances everything from tandoor to walk station to pizza oven to Evo grill to uh, a big uh, a propane, uh, I mean, a gas grill and a, then a, then a wood smoker. So I think this is, this is done. Now I have tea. I didn't have to do too much to it either to, you know, to, yeah, I'll just pour it out here. What I usually do is I, uh, have it iced. So I have a, a chill device that you just pour it into and drop it in and it chills it about two minutes and you can put it in ice without any dilution. So it's really good tea too. It makes, makes it excellent tea. Well, now, now I think we're all gonna go for a little coffee maybe before <laughs> the our master classes start. I'd like to yeah. Welcome uh, to, to thank you for this uh, great experience and sharing all of these uh, uh, devices and uh, and uh, how you can control and fine tune the whole coffee experience. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, Bill. Thank you for getting up so early. Uh, yeah. It was it was fun having you. And good, um, to good to see your face too. And for the the attendees, I'll see you in about five minutes in master classes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.